All right, so here we go. Now we're gonna jump into the actual first round of painting. And remember, just like whenever we did our black and white uh, initial still life painting, this is gonna look a little rough, right? Uh, I know that the back is gonna be all kind of in black here in shadow. That's gonna peel over, up and over into a shoulder. It's gonna look a little funky. That's absolutely okay. Have your palette ready to go. Again, I'm gonna paint on glass. Um, also, uh, and you don't need to, you can paint on literally anything. You can use a plate from your kitchen, that's fine. Um, have your paintbrushes out and ready to go. Also, smart idea to have a little bit of uh, water in case you need to rinse out your brush. As we go forward, just like we've done with all of our other paintings, please, please make sure, um, start with the biggest brush that you can, right? Um, you, you don't wanna be sitting here with some teeny little brush doing dee -dee 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 little tiny bits along the way. It's, it's not a good idea. Uh, instead, start with something way bigger than you think you need to, right? I can even go larger than this. Um, it's just about covering territory, right? Just getting something on there. We can clean it up as we go along. Everything that you paint here now today is going to get painted over with some value of gray. That's just fine, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get our supplies situated and set up. So I've got my palette right there, uh, and I wanna go ahead and put a little bit of black paint and a little bit of white paint. And again, I've got these big old jars of paint here. Shake it up, it's kinda, kinda old, I haven't used it in a while. And we're gonna go ahead and pour it out. This is a medium body paint, um, just kind of school supply style here. There we go. Um, and also remember too, pull out less paint than you think you need. Um, you can always pour more should you need it. Uh, but once you kind of pull it out, it's, it's gonna be kind of used up and, and done. And so we wanna make sure that we've got a good supply. Now I've already gone ahead, you can tell this is an older canvas, I've already gone ahead and uh, kind of gessoed it, kind of whitewashed it. Um, I wanna have a little bit of white paint because I messed something up, but I probably don't need a lot of white paint. Start with the biggest brush. Whatever brush makes you mildly uncomfortable, that's just a little bit too big, you can't quite control it, that's the one you wanna start with. Load up my brush a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just start painting here. So let's see, I know that his ear is pretty heavily outlined in black. If you find that as you're painting, your paint goes on kind of streaky looking, um, that's probably because there's too much water in your paint. Maybe you recently rinsed out your paintbrush and didn't fully dry it out, or maybe your the, uh, the bristles of your actual paintbrush are a little bit too firm for your thinner bodied paint. That's another possibility. Um, worst case scenario, uh, just paint thin, and then you can always do a second coat. Um, but again, like I said, all of this is going to be an undercoat anyway, so it's not really that much to, uh, to be concerned about. I'm going to bring this shadow shape kind of down, let's see, cuts right underneath his chin. It's kind of an ear shape in there. Kind of comes over his shoulder. Oh my God, that's a, that's a high collar. Let's see, kind of cuts down like that. Change it on the fly. As you're painting, you might notice something that you didn't notice whenever you're, you were uh, drawing. very quickly going to pull that portrait out so that if anyone's around at your house, if they're watching you paint, they might not know what the heck you're doing. You see it in your mind's eye. It's, it's there, but they might not know. So when you start applying this black paint, it is going to jump out and they'll start seeing it for themselves. I, even though this is a big paintbrush, I bet I can, bet I can get in here, do some of these simpler shapes. All right, that's pretty good for his ear. Probably can round some of this out. I don't need those hard angles anymore. That was just for uh, drawing purposes. He's got a big heavy shadow right here on his forehead. Get his hair. A little bit of a widow's peak in there. And he's got some crunch in his hair here, kind of where it's overlapping. Don't worry too much about texture and, and hair quality, all that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll get to that. I'm gonna leave it in, kind of just a little unfinished looking. That does the job for me. He's got a little bit of a highlight just over his head, and it kind of comes up. I'll leave it rough. Don't worry about trying to blend it out. You, you can't. Um, you, you are only working with plain black and white right now, so there's no way to really blend it out, even if you wanted to. Just kind of rough it on there. Let's see. Again, biggest brush I can get. Put those eyebrows in there 
got some big old caterpillar eyebrows, let's toss them on. This whole side of the space is really heavily shadowed, but we can get in there. And if you feel like as you're painting, there's just a section that this big paintbrush is going to mess something up, don't sweat it. You can switch over to your smaller paintbrush whenever you want to, switch back and forth. I just like to try to get everything I possibly can with, uh, with the big brush first. And again, remember everything we've been talking about so far, this is just a practice. Everything we've done in this class so far is just a practice to get you to your big finale, your final paper, your, excuse me, your final painting. That's going to be the one that really showcases that you've learned something. So if you mess up, if it's not perfect, if it's a goofy looking portrait, who cares? You are not selling these on Etsy. You're not making millions of dollars on the side. Not yet, at least. Soon. Soon we'll get you there. So let's see, just bring this around. Something eh, that's kind of a bow tie ish looking shape. His coat kind of angles funny right there. I think that's like his lapel. Hold it up nice and clean. Looks pretty good for my big paintbrush. I'm going to switch over to a smaller one real quick. I'm just going to go ahead and put my paintbrush in the water, kind of rinse it out. I'll clean it. This is my next brush down. This is about half the size of what I was just using. The last brush was about a one inch brush. It's about half an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up that brush. Now I'm gonna get some of these little details in here. And again, try your best. It, it's really tempting. Um, it's tempting for me as well. Try your best to avoid outlines. If you can, you wanna try and paint shapes as much as you possibly can. Even if it kinda fudges what's on the actual uh, digital picture there, even if it's not exactly accurate, try to stick with shapes. Um, it's going to really help you out down the line. So like that's not exactly what his eye looks like. It's pretty simplified, it's pretty roughed in, but it really shows me quickly where that shadow is. And that's really the whole purpose of this entire exercise right now with this black and white, is just showing where's the shadow coming from, where's the highlight from. I can touch up everything else along the way. some of these shapes in there. Again, paint with shapes as much as you can. If your brush kind of fuzzes out like that a little bit, do not worry. Again, we're going to paint over all of this anyway. Don't get perfectionisty on me. Okay. If you accidentally paint over a little highlighted spot, don't worry about it. Don't even try to fix it now. Let it dry. You can paint over it later. I think a lot of times whenever we get into painting, we expect that it has to be this magical muse, this thing that you know you either get or you don't get. Either you can do it perfectly like you see on TV, or you don't. And I've been studying for years and years. I was not a painter to start with by any means. I, I like to draw, and painting was my enemy. You can learn all this stuff. None of this is really all that difficult as soon as you get over your perfectionism. That's the hardest part. When you are trying to be perfect, oof, it is just gonna eat you alive. And it is most certainly not going to help you. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Sort of shadow around his eye there. It's pretty heavily shadowed. I know there's a little white spot in there. I'm not gonna be able to get it with my paintbrush. Um, I could switch to a smaller paintbrush, but honestly, I don't know if the glare on his eyeball is quite that important at this stage. Uh, maybe it will be later. We'll fix it in later. Again, a little bit rough around the uh, around the edges. Please don't sweat it. It's just not that important. Shapes. Shapes are important. Trying to paint with shapes is very important. The reason we do that is, is your brain is making a decision. Your brain is trying to decide, is this a black shape? Is this a white shape, right? If I just painted lines all over the place, my brain would never need to make that actual decision. My brain would never need to uh, struggle, right? It is a struggle to try and choose whether or not it's in shadow or whether or not it's in highlight. But it's not easy to do that. Um, and so a lot of times we tend to avoid that struggle 
because we don't. Uh, we as humans don't really like to have to choose something. It's, it's a, a nuisance. Um, fight that urge. Fight it a lot, really. And in every aspect of your life, fight that urge. If something is hard, if it's challenging, it's probably worth doing. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you, I think that looks pretty daggone good. Let's check that chin real quick. That looks good. Yeah, I think that's about where I need to be. Now, again, there's definitely a lot more detail going on in the iPad version, right? But everything's kind of where it needs to be. The, the eye is there, the hair is there, a little glow around the hair. I could put some highlight on the hair. I definitely see some of that crunch going on, but I'm not that worried about it. So what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna go ahead and pause real quick. What we wanna do next is switch over to the other picture, uh, the kind of slightly high contrast with some gray values. Uh, we're gonna switch over to that. We're gonna mix up some grays. Uh, and just like we did for our still life, we wanna mix up a medium gray first, apply the medium gray. Then we're gonna switch up and make five values. So we'll have black, dark gray, medium gray, light gray, white. Well, for those five values. With those five values, that's where we're gonna to start getting into some really nice kind of crunchy detail. After we do those five details, or those five values, excuse me, after we do that, then we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the finished version of the photo. Uh, and that's where we're gonna kind of just play around, fix up little details here and there. This might not be a perfect portrait by the time you're done, but it will absolutely be the best portrait you've done to this point, okay? All right, let's go ahead and switch over, come on.